Good morning children. Hope you are ready for today's class. We are doing about the reproduction in plants, isn't it? Do you know that the reproduction means the continuation of the species. It is the ability of living organisms to produce their offsprings of their own species, isn't it? So that is called as reproduction. You also know that reproduction is of two types, that is asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. Reproduction which takes place with the fusion of male and female gametes is called sexual reproduction which results in the formation of zygote. Zygote in turn gives rise to the seed. Seed develops into the new plant. So this is about the sexual reproduction. Okay children? So the sexual reproduction involves male and female parts. The fusion of male and female parts results in the formation of zygote which develops into the seed and seed develops into the new plant. So next, in asexual reproduction, there are no sexual features of male and female parts in them. It takes place either through the vegetative parts or by budding process or by spoliation. That is by formation of spores. I'll tell you in detail about all these things. Now, you already know about the vegetative reproduction you have learned in this morning classes, isn't it? So the vegetative parts like uh, root, stem and leaves, they give rise to the new plant. How do the plants propagate the new plants? Through root, stem and leaves. If it is the stem, you can, uh, that, uh, you can take the example of potato. Potato, it has uh, buds over it, which when you uh, sow in the soil, it develops into the new plant. In the similar manner, the onion, the bulb of onions, they give rise to the new plant when they are sown in the soil. In similar manner, garlic, turmeric, lily and sugar cane also give rise through their stems, new plants through their stems. Next, coming to the root modification. That is, the plants give rise to the new plants. These plants like sweet potato, carrot, turnip, radish, beetroot, dahlia and these plants they give rise to their new plants through their roots. They propagate their new plants through their roots. Okay. So this is the examples for the root modification. And these are the examples. Next coming to the leaves. I told you the begonia and bryophyllum are the leaves which propagate their new plants through their the buds, the small buds that arise at the leaf notches. I have told you, I have drawn the figure also for you. So these are the leaf notches that they develop and they fall, they detach after they grow, they detach from the plant and fall down and grow into the new plant again. So this is the, about the priority. Okay, so each notch contains a bud-like arrangement of the <coughs> leaves arise. <coughs> Leaf okay, children. See here, children. This is the bryophyllum where the, the leaf notches, the buds are developed, and these buds really fall over the ground and under favorable conditions they grow into the new plant. So, this is how the vegetative propagation of stem, root, and leaves takes place. This is the stem, the eyes of potato, these are the depressions found over the potato where they when they are sown in the soil they give rise to the new plant. So this is the case of vegetative propagation of the new plants. Now coming to the budding and spore formation. These are also the uh, type of reproduction where there are no male and female parts. Only these uh, new plants arise through the bud formation. So this is called as budding process. And uh, by the spore formation, so reproduction through spore formation, it is called as sporulation. What is it called now? It is called as sporulation. So by spores, spore formation. Okay, by bud formation here. Budding by formation of buds. So how does the bud formation take place? I'll tell you now. See ya. For example, it is yeast. In yeast, the reproduction is by budding process. You even can, you can observe in your houses where this yeast is used for fermentation process. Isn't it? In the bakeries and all this has been used. You can take a little of 
yeast and put it in a bowl and uh, uh, add a little of water in it and you can see the development of the yeast through the budding process. So here you see ma. So these are the structures where a small bud arises from the body, a bulged part, a bulge occurs and a, an epidermal layer of the cell of the yeast cell. This is the yeast and this is the small bud formation that arises. So when it enlarges, when it develops, it detaches from the parent and leads an independent life. Okay, each bud leads an independent life and it develops a bud over. So in this process, it uh, the, the develops the new buds. So the yeast develops its species through the budding process. Okay, children, next. Coming to the spore formation, you might have seen the breads when it is moist in moist condition, it develops into the fungus. It, uh, fungus develops over the bread, isn't it? In moist condition, after a long time, sometimes when you go out and keep the bread in your fridge, and after time you forget it, and uh, when you come from uh, outside, you can so for a long longer period if you keep it in the fridge and you forget it to open then uh, the molds develop in the bread. That is, a, uh, you can see the black powdery structure that is developed. Some first it uh, develops into the white color and uh, further it develops the, into the black powdery structures developed over the bread that is called as molds. So the molds that are developed in the bread are due to the formation of spores by spore formation. So the molds, bread mold, is the best example for the reproduction through spore formation. Is it clear children? So the mould that is the type of fungus that is developed over the bread by spore formation. So it is the best example for the sporulation that is an asexual reproduction type of asexual reproduction. So if it, this is a bread you can so, so under the moist conditions under the moist conditions, what happens? A spore develops. This is a sporangiophore. This is a sporangiophore. This is a sporangium, the head like structure. Is it clear about it? You can learn this in detail in your higher classes. So, first you see here, these are hyphae like structures that develop over the, if you see under the microscope, the structure of the spores, that black powdery structure that developed over the bread. If you take, this is the bread mound ma. These are the black powdery structures that develop over the bread. Okay ma. This is the head, this is sporangium. These are hyphae or sporangiophores, spores. These are the sporangio spores. Okay, children. So like this, they develop. Okay, over the bread. Completely, you will be seeing the spore formation continuously over the bread, and the bread gets spoiled at last. So this is about the bread mound. Okay, children, this is the asexual type of asexual reproduction. Now, we'll see about the sexual reproduction. To know about this sexual reproduction, first of all, you should know the parts, that is the importance of flower in a plant. Okay, so you know that there are flowering plants and non-flowering plants, isn't it? So flowering plants, if you take the flowering plants, Flower is a main part of the plant which helps for reproduction of its new generation. How does it take place? It is an attractive part of the plant, you know it, isn't it? So, what? how many types of flowers are there? What are they? We'll see now. Later, types of flowers, what are the parts of the flowers? We'll see and later we'll move to the sexual reproduction. How does it take place? Okay, children, before going into the sexual reproduction, you should know the flower, importance of flower in reproduction and parts of the 
plan. Okay, now we will see the importance of plan and parts of the plan. Or it is also called as floral parts. Okay, now we will see about this. So the types of class are four. So before going into the flower parts, I tell you the parts of the plan. The class are of four types like complete plan, complete plan, incomplete plan, Unisexual plants Bisexual plants Bisexual plants So what are complete plants? What are incomplete plants? What are unisexual and bisexual plants? In order to know this, you should know the flower parts what are the parts of the flower? I will draw a simple flower so that you can understand all the parts of the flower. Okay children? Here, children, how to draw a flower and its parts I will tell you. So, this is the stalk of the flower. So, this is a bulge part at the base above the stalk. This is bulge part is called as thalamus. It belongs to calyx. Especially the flower consists of four parts. That is number one, calyx. Number two, Carbola. Number 3, Andresium. And number 4, Gynesh. You should understand these parts now in a plot. See here. So this 